I have sunburn on my face, which is kind of appropriate because today we're talking about Spain because it's a sunny place. When you think about Spain, you may think of its famous food, its wine, or its football teams. It's a place with a lot of rich culture and reasons to visit, but everything in life has a dark side to it, and Spain is no different. Just like all the other countries we've done on this list, Spain has some stories that may scare you away or want to visit it even more, depending on what kind of person you are. Let's find out. My name is Danny Burke. This is the top 10 scary Spanish urban legends. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Vampire of Barcelona. Enriquita Marti was a prostitute who started her own brothel in Grazzi. It was where she would provide young children to her rich elite clients. She would kidnap orphans as young as 14 down to just 3 years old by wrapping them in her black cape. This led people to refer to her as Enriquita the Vampire. The police actually discovered this disgusting brothel, but the son of an influential person was there who paid off both the police and Enriquita to keep quiet. With her newfound wealth, she purchased apartments around Barcelona to open more brothels. The children that she felt were not up to scratch would simply be murdered. Their bones were sold as powders, their fats became moisturizing oils and machine grease, and their blood went into demonic potions. During the day, she dressed as a beggar to scout for children. One day, she accidentally kidnapped a child who had a family and was not an orphan. The family notified the police, who discovered the full horrors of what had been going on. She was jailed without trial and ended up being killed by other prison inmates. She never showed remorse for her crimes and maintained that it was just business. Without a trial to refer to, many people doubt certain aspects of the story, which has left the tale as more of an urban legend to be passed down over the years. Next up at number 9 now we have La Chica de la Curva. This translates to The Girl on the Curve and is perhaps Spain's most famous ghost story. Legend says that in Barcelona there is a very dangerous road. One cold and rainy night many years ago, a man was driving home on that road. His mind wandered to the thoughts of his family and at that exact moment, he saw her, a girl, standing in the middle of the road. She was motionless, only the raindrops pouring down her face were moving, soaking her long and dirty white dress. The man stopped the car and asked her, are you okay? Do you want to get in? I can take you home. Without a word, the girl got into the car. The man continued to drive and began to feel uncomfortable in her presence. He sped up in the hopes of making the journey as quick as possible, but then she leant forward, put her hand on his shoulder, and told him to go slower around the next curve as it's especially dangerous. Confused, the driver asked how does she know this? She locks eyes with him in the rear view mirror and calmly tells him it was this curve that killed her. Terrified, the man begins to pull the car over. The girl tells him that it was her job to warn people on the road so they don't meet the same fate as her. By the time the car has stopped, she has vanished and the man was left with a story that has been passed down over the years. Next up at number 8 now we have the Little Grave Robbers. This story begins with two boys named Juan and Carlos. They were always up to some kind of mischief to impress their friends, each one trying to outdo the other. One day, they decided to go way over the line in a big way. They wanted to rob a grave. The boys wanted to show off a real life skeleton to their friends. They hadn't given much thought to the consequences of this afterwards. They waited until nightfall and then snuck into a nearby cemetery. They climbed the wall and waited in the bushes until the coast was clear. One of them saw a shovel next to a fresh mound. They figured a fresh corpse would be even crazier than a skeleton, and so they got to work. Some locals heard the noise and came to investigate the sound of the digging. They thought that the dead were coming back to life. Someone yelled, over there, where they saw the two boys emerging from one of the graves, staggering and covered in dirt. They attacked the boys and beat them to death. The next morning, they realized what they had done. Far from zombies, the locals had killed Juan and Carlos. To hide their crime, they burned the bodies and buried them in shallow graves. Every night since, since then, the ghosts of the two boys can be heard coming from the cemetery. They are said to rise up and disturb the graves of the people who murdered them. Sometimes they can be heard screaming, where are our brains? The locals shut the windows and pray for morning to come. Coming at number 7 now, we have El Coco. This is a story of Francisco Ortiga. He lived in Spain at the beginning of the 20th century. Francisco had tuberculosis and despite asking everyone for help, his condition only worsened. When he got really desperate, he approached a curandera for help a traditional healer. She told him that he would only be cured by drinking the blood of children and rubbing their fat on his chest. So Francisco set out to perform this horrific deed. He kidnapped Bernardo, a seven year old local boy, and bundled him into a cloth bag. When he got back to his house, Francisco slit Bernardo's throat and drank his blood. The demonic ritual saved his life, but doomed him forever. He became El Coco, a monstrous creature that is said to stalk Spanish streets at night, searching for children to keep himself alive. He doesn't 
doesn't have a specific appearance and is said to be a shapeshifter, appearing as whatever terrifies you the most. However, those that have seen him and live to tell the tale say all they remember is his chilling skull face. Next up, number six now, we have the Blind Maiden. This is a more modern Spanish urban legend which goes a bit like this. There used to be a website called blindmaiden.com. It promised visitors the ability to see true ultimate horror in a way which horror movies these days would never show them. It said that their browser would not let them go any further until they met some requirements. Number one, you must be at home, alone, and in the dark. Number two, you must enter the site at exactly midnight. And number three, it must be a moonless night outside. If you satisfy its demands, you may continue. Your screen will be assaulted by images of girls and boys flickering quickly before your eyes. You won't be able to make out much other than the fear on their face and the fact that all of their eyes are missing every single one of them. Then some text will appear on a screen that reads as follows. This website will take you to a whole new level of horror, a horror that will use all five of your senses. You must be careful not to click on anything by accident. You will be faced with a real experience of absolute horror. Click the accept button to engage actively in the experience. At this point, if you click decline, you'll be taken to just see some gory pictures. However, if you accept, you have sealed your fate and the ultimate horror will be shown to you. A sinister the silhouette will walk into your house and then into the room you are in. On the screen, you will see the image of what looks like the back of you sat at the computer. You will freeze as something taps you on the shoulder. You turn and then the blind maiden will kill you with a deathly scream. Then she plucks out your eyes and takes a photo of you which will be added to the gallery of victims on the website. As the legend spread, the website was taken down but some believe the curse still lives on. Moving on to number 5 now, we have the Alchemist's House. In Barcelona, one of the only remaining original buildings in the city's Jewish quarter has long been known as the Alchemist's House, named after the infamous man who lived there. In the 14th century, there lived there a Jewish alchemist known for his remedies and potions. He had a beautiful daughter who fell in love with a Christian boy who she was seeing in secret. When she got tired of lying about it, she asked the boy to ask her father for permission to marry her. The boy knew that her father would never agree and so he suggested they simply remain lovers instead. The girl was furious and ended the relationship in a rage. This sent the boy into a hatred for her, a loathing so intense that he vowed to kill her if he couldn't have her no one could. He visited the alchemist, the girl's father, and got a rose from him laced with poison that would kill anyone with one sniff. That night, he went to her window, begging for forgiveness and her hand in marriage. She accepted and brought the flower to her nose to smell it, at which point she collapsed to the floor, her body writhing in pain as she died. When the alchemist found his daughter the next day, he realized what he had done. He left the house forever, cursing it as he went, so that nobody could ever live there again. This day, the house still remains in Barcelona. You can visit it, but nobody has lived there since. Next up, and number four now, we have Veronica Haya. According to this legend, Veronica was once a teenage girl who came from a small Spanish village. One night, she was playing a paranormal game with her friends called The Game of the Scissors and the Book. The book, in this case, was the Bible, and along with the scissors, the ritual would allow them to contact the spirits of the dead. The ritual came with a very specific set of rules, what to say and how to behave. This was for their own safety, but Veronica did not listen. She broke a number of these rules and even taunted the spirits at one point. All of a sudden, the ribbon they were using snapped and the scissors flew through the air, stabbing Veronica in the neck. Her friends fled in terror. When they came back, they found Veronica lying in a pool of her own blood on the ground, stab marks all over her body. In one hand, she was holding the Bible, and in the other, she was clutching the bloody scissors embedded into her neck. In the years since then, people claim that Veronica's spirit is now unable to rest, and now she takes revenge on those who do not respect the dead. By repeating the game that she played, some people believe you can summon Veronica, although they always warn you not to be disrespectful like she was or risk the same fate as hers. Next up at number three now, we have Pesanta. This legend comes from Catalan in Spain. The Pesanta is a huge dog-like creature, black and hairy with steel paws. That's right, actual paws made of steel. For centuries, people there have said the Pesanta crawls into people's bedrooms at night 
light creeping through the keyhole. It moves quickly and sits on their chest, making it difficult or even impossible to breathe. If you don't wake up, it will slowly creep into your nightmares until you can break free from its spell. The steel paws are huge and can easily slash or bash anything that tries to get in the Passanta's way. However, the paws have holes in them, which make it almost impossible for it to grab anyone and take them away. And so, after its night of terror, a Passanta will return to its home in an abandoned church or ruin, ready to strike when night comes again. Moving on to number two now, we have the White Shadow. On February 10th, 1935, Barcelona is said to have experienced Spain's first officially recorded poltergeist attack. On that night, the local night watch guard left his family home for his shift. Not long after, a faint banging sound started coming from the walls of the house, slowly getting louder and louder and louder. The son woke up and switched on the light to investigate. At that exact moment, a drawer from a dresser shot across the room. The family screamed for help. Two members of the local patrol came to help. By the time they arrived, the banging had become much fainter. The noise carried on into the morning, and so the family left to file a police report. The police searched the house, but found nothing. The banging started again two nights later. So loud, the neighbors came to investigate. Witnesses said a dining room chair fell and rose on its own, that the light swung violently, the clock stopped and started again repeatedly, a fork disappeared and reappeared, the windows were shaking, and stones began to rain down in the courtyard. When the police came to interview all the witnesses, they found everyone had exactly the same story, except for the children. All of the children said they saw a white shadow moving between the clock and the chairs, something which none of the adults reported. In the years since then, many people have shared this story of the white shadow poltergeist who can only be seen by children. And finally, number one now, we have La Musara. In the Prades mountain range in Tarragona, the town of La Musara was home to a number of different people until 1959. That's when the whole village just disappeared. Now all that remains of the village is eight buildings, the church, and the urban legend of paranormal activity there. Many people say the disappearance has something to do with the fog. Even on sunny days, it will fall suddenly over the town, leaving visitors disoriented. It's believed that the mist has a paranormal link to time travel. When it descends, it leads people to believe they have only been in the village for a few hours, when in reality, days, weeks, months, or even years have passed. Many visitors also report hearing voices and the sound of approaching horse hooves. The story says that the fog is the result of a curse that was cast on the village centuries ago by a witch, making it a gateway to another realm. They say if you jump over a particular stone outside one of the houses, you'll pass into a parallel dimension known as La Vila del Cis, inhabited by creatures of the underworld. If you've ever seen Stranger Things, I think La Musara sounds like a real life version of that. Okay, I know that was a long one, but hopefully there was just more for you to enjoy. I think we're gonna take a break from Spain for a while and focus on a different country for now. What would you like? We've done a lot of the famous countries in the world now, so I'm excited to get into some lesser known ones for now. Thanks for watching, as always guys. My name is Danny Burke, and I'll see you all in the next video. <laughs>